section, you learned how to enter the sum function, which is a single argument function. In this lesson, you will learn how to use various other single argument statistical functions. And you will be introduced to multiple argument statistical functions. I'll also show you an easy way of remembering uh, how to do statistical functions. There's actually a button on Excel that makes this even easier than I'm going to first show you. So let's start out by putting some numbers down. Let me put down, oh, let's say the number 1, then maybe 2, then maybe 3. Let me skip a space, show you what happens if there's a blank cell. Put another number, maybe 2 again, maybe 4, 4, and 5. And maybe I should put down a word, just show you what happens if there's something that's not a number in the cell. By the way, when I type in word, it just stays there. Let me go up and, and delete this 5 again and type in a 5 again. When I put in the 5, notice it starts on the left side, but when I hit enter, it moved to the right side. But here, when I type in the word word, when I hit enter, it just stays on the left side. It's not that important, but it's kind of interesting to tell you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do some statistical functions, some single argument statistical functions. Here is a list of some of the functions that we'll be covering. Actually, these aren't functions. These are magic words. Let me explain what I mean by that. If I want Excel to do something, a function, I first put in an equal sign to tell it that I want it to do something, not just print out what I print, but to take that information and go do something with it and bring me back an answer. In this, after following the equal sign, I need to tell it a magic word. In this case, the magic word is count. All I'm going to have it do is count the cells that have numbers in it. The next thing I do after I tell it the equal sign to tell it I want it to do something, the magic word to tell it what it is I want it to do, following that in parenthesis I tell it where the data are that I want it to do this thing to. In this case we started with uh, B2 and we went down to B10. So I put B2 and a colon. A colon is a dot over another dot. Don't put a semicolon because that won't work. B10, and your parenthesis, and now we'll press the Enter button, and it should give me an answer. It does. It says that there were seven cells between B2 and B10 that have numbers in them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's true. What if I wanted to count the cells that have anything in them, numbers or words? Well, then I can use this other function, which is called count A. Equal sign, count A, left parenthesis, B2, colon, B10, end of parenthesis, enter. And there were eight cells. One, two, three, not this one, four, five, six, seven, eight cells that had something in it, either a word or a number. What if I wanted it to count the cells that had nothing in it? Well, then I could put count blank. So count blank, left parenthesis, B2, colon, B10, end of parenthesis, hit enter. And there's one blank cell in this range that I gave it. Now notice, if I click on the cell again, up here it tells me what it is I typed. Inside the cell it tells me the answer. Up here in the formula bar, it tells me what it is I typed to get this answer. The next thing is the, the mean. Uh, and the magic word for mean is average. So we'll put an equal sign, the word average, uh, let me make it a, a capital E just to show you that it doesn't matter if it's mixed case or capital or not capital. So here I'll put a end of parenthesis, B2, colon, B10, end of parenthesis, and hit enter, and the average is 3. Now that's not the average of 
I mean, what's it the average of? It's not the average of this word or of this blank. It's only an average of those cells that have numbers in it. So it's an average of this number, this number, this number, not this, but this number, this number, this number, and this number. So it's the average of these seven numbers is 3. Let's find the median. The median, I've typed in an equal sign, typed in the word median. Uh, helps if I spell it correctly. Uh, left parenthesis, then B2 colon, B10, end of parenthesis, hit enter, and there it is. Now the next thing I want to show you is the mode. Now the mode is one I do need to warn you about. The mode is the number that occurs the most often in your data set, the value that occurs the most often, or that has the highest frequency. In our data, one only occurs once. Two occurs one two times. Three only occurs once. Four occurs two times. Five only occurs once. So there's two numbers that tie for the mode, the number two and the number four. But Excel will only tell us one of those. And it won't tell us that there's another one to be found. So the mode is a little bit dangerous. When you find a mode, that doesn't mean it's the only mode. B2 colon B10. So be careful when you work with mode. Let's try uh, deviation squared. What this is, is this is the sum of the squared deviations. I'm not sure if you're already this far in your reading, but this is if we take the deviation from each score and then square them and then add them up. And in this case, We'll get equal, we'll put in D square, SQ, left parenthesis, probably help if I move the cursor, B2 colon, B10, end of parenthesis, and hit enter. And I get 12. That's the sum of the square deviations.